Patients with severe hepatic cirrhosis often develop renal failure as well. The pathology is complex, but it's thought to center on alterations in systemic blood flow that damage the kidney. This is called hepatorenal syndrome. If these patients don't receive a liver transplant, they're likely to die within a few months. Estimating glomerular filtration rate in patients with hepatorenal syndrome is difficult. The techniques that involve serum creatinine tend to overestimate GFR in these patients, which can lead to recommending drug doses that are too high. There are several problems with creatinine. Creatinine is a breakdown product of muscle, but many of these patients suffer from muscle wasting. Using creatinine as a biomarker for GFR assumes that very little creatinine undergoes tubular secretion or reabsorption. However, patients with cirrhosis often have an increased secretion of creatinine into the renal tubule, and very high serum bilirubin concentrations can interfere with the assays used to measure creatinine concentrations in the blood. This has led some researchers to consider using a biomarker other than creatinine in patients with hepatorenal syndrome. Cystatin C is an endogenous protein that also undergoes glomerular filtration. The assay to measure cystatin C is more expensive than the one for creatinine, but it seems to provide more accurate results in cirrhotic patients. Some people have recommended estimating GFR in patients with hepatorenal syndrome using an equation that includes both cystatin and creatinine measurements. It's a variation on the equation developed by the Chronic Kidney Disease Epidemiology Collaboration and is known as the ckd epi creatinine cystatin c equation. The equation is a bit complex, and unlike cocroft galt can't be performed easily without a scientific calculator. The equation uses serum creatinine concentration, serum cystatin c concentration, age, gender, and race. The parts of the equation that require the most explanation start with min and max. What one has to do is figure out the value of serum creatinine divided by kappa. Kappa is 0.7 for females and 0.9 for males. Then one has to figure out which is smaller, the ratio of serum creatinine to kappa or one. If the ratio is less than one, the ratio is raised to the power of alpha, which is negative 0.248 for females and negative 0.207 for males. If one is less than the ratio of serum creatinine to kappa, one is raised to the power of alpha. And remember, one raised to any value is going to equal one. For the next part, the clinician does the same thing, but uses whichever value is greater, the ratio of serum creatinine to kappa or one. Whichever value is greater is raised to the power of negative 0.601. Next, the clinician does the same thing with the serum cystatin C concentration. The lower value, either cystatin C divided by 0.8 or one is raised to the power of negative 0.375. Then the higher value, either cystatin divided by 0.8 or 1, is raised to the power of negative 0.711. 0.995 is raised to the power of the patient's age in years. The value is then multiplied by 0.969 if the patient is female, and again by 1.08 if the patient is black. Keep in mind that the only way to really find out what her GFR is would be to inject some sort of radioactive tracer or inulin and watch how quickly it appears in the urine. Even with all those calculations, this is still a guess. However, it's thought that this particular way of guessing is the best option we have at the moment. Remember that patients in liver failure who progress to renal failure are thought to have GFRs lower than would be suggested by just looking at their serum creatinine. Adding cystatin C concentrations to the estimate probably gives us a better answer but we still need to monitor the patient closely for drug efficacy and toxicity and not put too much faith in numbers that come out of our calculators.